Greetings radio people, welcome back to the shack. Still seeing a lot of posts on various forums with people struggling to get a TS-890 working on digital modes. I've just completed a new computer build for, it's actually for software development purposes, but this PC I'm recording on now has never had any radios connected to it and it's never had any radio software installed on it. On the end of this wire here, this wire here, is my TS-890. For the avoidance of doubt, it's connected to this USB socket here. So what I thought we could do is take the opportunity to download the drivers, download some software, plug this in, and take you step by step through the configuration of the rig using digital modes. I'm gonna reset my radio back to factory default, download some stuff, and let's show you how to do it. So we're gonna go into the menu. We're gonna go down to the USB uh, file menu. We're going to save configuration data. The third one down, save config data. That's now saving it to the radio. We're now gonna copy the configuration data to the USB flash drive I've got stuck in the front of the radio. We need to select the configuration files. I don't want the screen capture files. Now hit the okay button. So that's now copied the data onto my memory stick. So what I'm gonna do now is go back to the top menu, the reset option at the very top there, and do a full reset on my rig and try not to cry. So this is now putting me back to factory default. So for the purposes of this video, this is a brand new rig. And there you have it. What could be simpler? So let us download some stuff. So I'm going to be really advanced and just use Google. So TS-890 driver, that'll do. Let's see what that comes up with. Virtual COM port driver, Kenwood. That's exactly what I want. Blah, 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 uh, blah, 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 for Windows 10. So let's download it. I shall stick it somewhere new. I'm going to create a new uh, video folder. So I'm just going to bung it in there. So let's save that. Done. Okay, great. Let's also look for WSJTX download. Uh, homepage. Here we go. So WSJTX is here. The latest general availability release is here. Windows version 2.1.2 Win64. That's what I want. So I'm going to download that and stick it in the same directory of my bob. So while that's downloading, let's open up the zip file. So this is the zip file I downloaded from Kenwood. So this has got all of the drivers and stuff in it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to extract all. It'll stick it wherever it wants to. And as long as I tick this box, it'll show me all of the extracted files when they finish downloading. So there they are. This is an x64 architecture machine. Most are. I'm just going to run this installer here and see what happens. Blah, 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 blah. Right, so that's installed now. So I'm going to show you a little trick now, if I may, if I may be so, so bold. I think I've just clicked on help, which I didn't want. Right, let's get rid of that. Let me just edit this device manager file here. I've got a little batch file on my desk. Hopefully you'll be able to see this. I don't know whether I can zoom in here at all. I don't think, oh, yes, I can. Oh, dear, oh, dear, oh, dear. View, zoom, zoom in. Control plus, it says, control plus. So this is a this is a, a batch file that I've got sat on my desktop. Uh, it does this set dev manager shown on present devices equals one, and it says dev management.msc. This is setting a configuration item for device manager and then running device manager. So I have that on the desktop all the time. If I double click on that, it runs it. If you then go to view uh, show hidden devices, you'll find sometimes you might find if you've got a million COM ports already installed on your computer, you might find like I have, you've got some grayed out COM ports. These are COM ports that have been in use, things that have been plugged in, then unplugged, forgotten, put in the bin, sold, eBayed, whatever. You can get rid of anything that's in gray and then it'll reinstall itself. But this is the problem 
where you plug something new in and it assigns it COM 674, whereas in fact you expect it to be COM 3 and 5 or something. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to take my magic USB cable and I'm going to plug it into the front of the computer. Into I'm not going to use a hub or anything in between. I'm going to plug this straight into the computer. Let's see what happens. So we are setting up a device, USB audio codec. It says down the bottom here, but you'll also note I've now got two COM ports, COM4 and COM5. Now, if we were to go back to the uh, manual for the radio, which is here, and if I were to search for enhanced, it tells me that if I go into device manager, let me zoom this up a bit now, right? So if I go into device manager, which is what we've done here, Okay, if I now go right click on my COM4 and I select properties and I go to details and I go to location paths, location paths, this says USB 1. Okay, now USB 1 is the standard port. So I now know that this COM port, COM4, is the standard port. I now know that COM5 for the same reason we can go into details look at location port location whatever it was location path and we'll see that that one's got a two on the end of it so that means this is the enhanced port so in my case your mileage may be different but in my case com4 is standard com5 is enhanced the other thing to note within the sound video and game controllers Apart from a whole pile of crap, I've got USB audio codec. That's the radio. So I now know I've got two COM ports and an audio device. Excellent. Let's have a bash at installing WSJTX. Now, I've moved the uh, webcam that I was using to capture my image to in front of the rig. Um, I'm trying my best to get a good capture of both the computer screen and the radio. It's not easy, so please bear with me. By the way, if you like what I'm doing or you find this video useful, please subscribe to my channel. I'd really much appreciate your support. So this is the WSJTX version that we downloaded. You saw me download this earlier, so I'm just gonna run this file now, and I'm just gonna run through the setup and see what happens. I'll have a desktop icon, thank you very much. That's a perfectly okay place to put it. Let's just install it with all of the defaults and let's see what happens when we try and set this up. So it's installed, we're going to allow it to run, so let's click finish. So that's the splash screen. Do not show this again, thank you very much. So I've now got two screens of WSJTX. I'm going to minimise everything else to get it out of the way so we don't get confused. I'm going to go File, Settings. My call sign, I think I know what that is. I should be able to manage that, although I don't seem to be able to type it in properly. My grid is there. Right. Radio. I have got a Kenwood TS-890, right? Kenwood TS-890S. That's that one there. Serial port. Now, we wrote it down. I'm sure we did, because we're good like that. We said COM4 was the standard port. So let's select COM4. Now, default, by default, this will be at 19200, I think but I might be wrong. So let's have a look at the radio. Menu, rear connectors, board rate, COM port 9600, board rate, virtual is 115200. So I was wrong. So over here, we need this to go to 115200. Now, default should be fine, but if you want it to be clever, it's eight bits, one stop bit, and no parity. We don't need to force any control lines. The PTT method, now first of all, we're gonna use CAT. So that will use the same COM port and just send a command down the line to the radio, to, uh, like a serial port command, if you like. Dear radio, please go into transmit. Uh, mode, we're going to use upper sideband split operation. I'm gonna use rig. So let's see, transmit audio source is rear or data, right? So we're using the USB audio. So let's go to the audio connection. I want this USB audio codec in both instances of this. Let's test the CAT. It works. Let's test the PTT. 
Now you can see that also works, right? So what I've found is that when I press the tune button, my radio's going into transmit, but I've not got any audio displayed. I've not got any audio going out. First thing to check, what I'm going to just quick, quickly check, I'm going to look in the sound device. You can get at this from control panel. If I press tune, you can see quite clearly the audio level here. So there's definitely audio going into the appropriate sound card. So what we need to do over here is press and hold the data button. And then we need to select when we're on the, the rear input for when we do a data send is we need that to be uh, USB audio. You see the setting here? Set that to USB audio. Press escape. Now what happens if I press tune? Lo and behold, I've got a carrier going out of my rig. So what I want to do now is uh, set my power output to something uh, appropriate. So um, let's set the max power out, or let, let's set the power out to uh, something like, I don't know, I'm going to set it down to 10 watts. You see my audio is down at 10 watts. And what I want to do is set my meter to be ALC. So when I do this, you'll see I've got lots and lots of ALC. So what I'm going to do is go into the speakers and the level, and all I want to do now is adjust this slider here so that I've got no ALC showing. So if we set the meter to be uh, ALC, what we need to do is adjust this audio slider here so that the um, so that we've got power out but no ALC. Now it looks like that's going to be about there. So if I go back to the rig and I set this to PO for power out, I've got about eight watts out or thereabouts, but I've got no ALC, and that's exactly how we want it to be set up. Perfect. So let's do one more little bit of silliness. Uh, let's have a look for MMSSTV. Uh, MMSSTV Hamsoft. So we're going to download version 1.13a here. So I'm going to put that in the same folder that I did earlier. Uh, let's run the executable. I've got it running twice for some reason. I'll only use one of them. Uh, yep, yeah, that's fine. That's fine. That's fine. Let's have a desktop icon. I kind of like them. Let's install it. Let's launch it. Right, so enter my call sign. I think I know that. That should be OK. Now, if we go in here and we go Options, Setup MMS STV, RX, that looks OK. TX, PTT, we now know that we've set up the RTS line on COM4. We did that using the advanced menu. So that PTT port should now work perfectly. Um, and then in MISC, we should be able to just select the two USB audio codec devices there and there. And apart from setting the audio level, which we've already done for FT8, JT, WSJT, but it might be different for this. So you have to make sure you've got no ALC on transmit. Apart from that, that should be it. There's nothing else you need to do. And when I click this TX button, lo and behold, my radio is going into transmit and there's audio there. So it really is as simple as that. I hope you enjoy it. As I've said before, please subscribe to my channel if you find this useful. I'll see you next time.